a friend of mine told me to never drink plain water when riding. Basically, have a bottle of Noon or other low-calorie electrolyte drink and a bottle of Tailwind Nutrition, which is Tailwind's like a carb drink, uh, more carb-centric. So she says, I tried it a couple times on multi-hour rides, but found myself wanting plain water to rinse my mouth. And I think we can all relate to that. When water just sounds good on a ride, oh my goodness, nothing, nothing is better than cold water when it sounds good, right? Uh, so uh, Sarah asks, what does Coach Chad think about this and what does the research say? Thanks to the awesome podcast and products, five stars for sure. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think even though you asked Sarah what Chad wants, uh, what Chad thinks about this, I think we're all probably going to opine on this one for sure. Um, uh, Amber, <laughs> you've done a whole lot of races where you've probably been in situations where you, you know, you've gotten bottles, but also probably been in situations where you've been desperately wanting water and desperately wanting drinks, probably a whole lot more than the rest of us. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, definitely. And we'll get Chad to jump in on this too. But um, I'm my, my first question is, I'm curious what the motivation uh, was behind your friend's advice. And so I would say my first thing is there's nothing wrong with plain water. Water sustains life. Water is awesome. Um, but it can be problematic if that's Zoolander. the only thing that you're taking. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> the essence of what Oh, man. I, so, 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 many, so many references going through my head right now. Oh, man. Um, yeah. No, but the, the point is that it, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, but it can be problematic if it's the only thing that you're taking in on the bike. So, again, I don't know if she was mentioning this to you because she felt like you weren't taking in enough uh, fuel in terms of carbohydrate or if you weren't hydrating well in terms of replacing electrolytes. So I just want to talk about two sides of that coin. So when you're riding, you're burning fuel, uh, which is mostly going to be carbohydrates in the form of glycogen. Um, and then you're also going to be losing fluid and electrolytes. And so the fluid component of that is mostly water. And then there's an electrolyte component, which is mostly sodium. Um, and I just generally, I'm a fan of just a simple approach, which is give the body what it needs to do the work that you're asking of it. So if it's burning through fuel and you're losing fluid and electrolytes, you want to give the body more fuel and you want to replace what's being lost. So the carbohydrate fueling, you know, just think of it like you're asking your body to write a lot of checks. So you want to keep on making those deposits, put money in the bank so you can keep on writing those checks. And then the electrolyte balance, uh, that's the fluid and the electrolytes in tandem. So I'll talk about carbohydrate fueling first. I won't go too deep into this because we've talked about this forever. But one of the things I just want to reiterate on this one is don't diet on the bike. So, you know, stepping back, a lot of people get into cycling. It's, I, it's a wonderful sport. I love it. Um, but, you know, there's a sense of like, okay, I want to get really fit. I want to you know, lose weight. I want to chase a particular body ideal. So if first of all it's not always the case that you need to create a cal caloric deficit not everyone needs to i think we get so bombarded with diet culture um you know internet feeds every almost every kind of media that you can consume is going to bombard you at some point with something to do with losing weight and in some cases yes that's a good thing and it's a good goal to chase but it's not always necessary and it's not always the thing that you need so you know that's the first assumption that you need to question um and going back to something that jonathan touched on earlier if you're getting into cycling there can be just these preconceived stereotypical um, ideas around what your body should look like if you're a fit cyclist everybody's different everybody's different so just give your body the fuel that it needs to do the work that you're asking of it and and you know chase the performance chase the you know fuel the effort that you're trying to do. So um, I really like the idea of, um, you know, shifting your focus to what your body can do. So the fact that you can get out and ride, that's pretty amazing in the first place. And then, you know, focusing on how awesome it is that you have this capacity to improve. So when you give your body the fuel that it needs, you put that money in the bank so you can write those checks and training, you're going to have a better workout on the day. A better workout on the day means you're going to have a better workout tomorrow because if you fuel your workout today, you're going to be better recovered when you tackle your workout tomorrow. That's going to build out a really good week. That's going to build out a good month. And before you knew it, you're going to have built out a really good season. So I'm just a really good, I'm, that's my, my take on it. I like to chase the performance, chase the effort. And that has a lot to do with putting the money in the bank so you can write those checks in your training. Um, so shifting away from the carbohydrate aspect of this, and that's the tailwinds component of what you're now carrying in your bottles. 
let's talk about the fluid and electrolyte replacement. So the fluid loss is mostly water, and that's going to cause a decrease in blood plasma volume, which is really kind of the, the metric of your hydration status. So uh, water is fine. It's fine as long as you have enough sodium on board, right? So if you are getting enough sodium in your normal diet and you're just the meals that you're eating off the bike, you're probably fine with water to hydrate. Um, if not, if you need more electrolytes than normal, let's say you're in particularly hot conditions or it's a particularly long ride or you've been eating a low sodium diet for some reason. But if, if you need a little bit of extra sodium and electrolyte, um, noon is a good thing. Uh, there's a lot of different products on the, on the, on the market that will focus on that. So, um, among those products, you can have things that focus only on electrolytes and hydration. There are some that will be a combination of electrolyte and carbohydrate in the same drink. Just figure out what works for you. But um, yeah, I, I just, there's nothing really wrong with water. I think the main thing is make sure that you're getting enough fuel on the bike, that you're maintaining a reasonable electrolyte balance. Um, and going back to that comment that don't diet on the bike, you know, if you, if you are chasing a calorie deficit of some kind, don't use your ride as the time to create that deficit fuel the effort on the bike and then create that deficit in other meals off the bike. So you want to really fuel appropriately before, during, and after your ride and then create a deficit elsewhere in your day. Um, and I, there's a lot more on the hydration component of this. And I want to let Chad take over on this because um, he definitely has some, some great stuff. I know he's <laughs> touched on before. Yeah. I, I've only, I've only got a little bit actually, but I, I think maybe some of this confusion stems from the, the, Noakes controversy. So Timothy Noakes, the, a well-known and respected in, in a lot of circles, researcher and athlete, it put forth the idea in a book called Waterlogged, which, you know, to the tune of 400 plus pages, that we really should be able to drink ad libitum or drink to thirst. And I, I can't disagree with that. There's so much of that works, but where it breaks down is in endurance events. And where it especially breaks down is in long endurance events, especially ones done in the heat. So yes, you may be able to simply drink to thirst. And a lot of the times that, that can just be water, especially again, if your sodium levels are uh, sufficient, but if you're going to take part in something, you know, any long endurance event or Ironman where you don't address your hydration just as just as well as you address your nutrition, you're basically setting yourself up for a very tough day, if not, you know, a, a, a race failure. I, I can't think of a story, an Ironman or a longer endurance event story that ever started with, I didn't have a nutrition plan. I didn't have a hydration plan and the day went perfectly. <laughs> Nobody said that because you have to plan for those things because they're severe undertakings. And if you don't know what you're going to eat, when you're going to eat, how much you're going to eat, how that's going to change over the course of the day, how you're going to hydrate, what your sodium loss rate is, what your sweat rate is, what the conditions are. I mean, all these things need to be taken into account to make a day that's as long and as challenging as those days are successful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. I want to say one thing talking about this is people should just be aware of something called hyponatremia. And that's where you kind of, you drink so much water that you lose salt in your body and it can be fatal. There's someone who died in the Chicago marathon. Um, it's not very often, but there are different degrees of it too. Um, another thing looking up on this, that, uh, women that are on their period are actually more vulnerable to hyponatremia too, which is pretty interesting that, um, is something to think about. But w one thing looking at the symptoms for hyponatremia and heat stroke, they're very similar. So a lot of what you don't want to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to say them, but what you don't want to do is, oh, someone has heat stroke. Let's give them a lot of water. Right. Um, and <laughs> they might have hyponatremia because they've already had a lot of water and you might be making it worse. So for hyponatremia, you might have nausea and vomiting, headache, confusion, loss of energy. Uh, and then it goes down to seizures and coma and stuff when it gets really bad. But for heat stroke, you get altered man uh, mental state, you nausea and vomiting and you get a headache. So I would just say that if you think you're experiencing a heat stroke, add some salt to it. There are salt pills you can use. There's electrolyte drink that we talked about, but I don't think you're going to do any damage by adding some salt or a little bit of sports drink. Um, if you think you have heat stroke and you might actually absorb water and cold water better with some salt and sugar in it. I mean, you will. Uh, so just everyone just be aware of that, that if you're think you're someone's experiencing heat stroke, don't just give them like gallons of cold water thinking that that's going to then lower their core body temperature and get them out of trouble. 
Yeah. Assuming that the Ironman, um, the, or I should say all the triathlons that we do, uh, when we do those in a couple of years, assuming that those are in hot conditions or warm conditions, <laughs> if you can't join on YouTube, Nate's eyes just got as big as saucers by the way. So, um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I, I, I tend to just lean on the carb side, right? Like Amber, you're talking about the carb side and then the more the electrolyte side in terms of mixes. And I te tend to lean just more on the carb side and I'm getting sodium still through taking in a carb mix, right? Um, at least the, I, I drink Marten it's in there. If you drink beta fuel, it's in there, that sort of thing. Most of them have some sort of sodium in there. Uh, whether that matches your sweat rate is a different uh, thing entirely. And you can tune into the podcast episode we did with Andy Blow from Precision Hydration. I thought he did a fantastic job of kind of clarifying a lot of those issues and just showing what we do know and what we don't know as far as how the human body sweats and how to manage the whole thing. But something with that really quick though is I guarantee once we get into more multi-sport stuff, just because, you know, talking about going for a long day, something like a full distance triathlon like that, toward the end, I'm probably, I, I always say, don't let palate fatigue get in the way of a good result. Um, it'd be a shame to let, you know, pickiness uh, uh, do that. But at the same time, I'm sure that that's when I'm probably going to want to mix in more of those electrolyte drinks or something like that. That's a slightly different taste profile, maybe a bit less heavy on the gut that sort of thing to, to, to mix it up. So I, I just want to acknowledge something. I'm probably guilty of just saying, just take carb drink all the time and, and leaving out that perspective. Uh, I understand that there's totally a place for both of them. Chad, you were going to say. Yeah. Um, while we were on the topic of, uh, Andy blow and, and the guys at pH or the folks at pH, uh, I, one of his articles did point out that, yeah, while exercise, uh, associated hyponatremia is, is a very serious risk and something you should absolutely be aware of. It, it's not, uh, fatality resulting from it is not as common as you might think. Um, since 1981, there have been 14 deaths in endurance sports. With that said, and, and I'm not trying to diminish the importance of those, it's, it's, it's a very big deal, no lie. However, it, it's, it's commonly more seen in, in basically degrees of it. So when they do poll people, I'm not sure how they measure it, but they look at uh, people finishing an Ironman distance race and uh, roughly 10% of them suffer from some level of exercise associated hyponatremia. So they're on that path. Mm -hmm. They're not getting to a point where they're necessarily in a dark or, or fatal place. However, they are suffering f to a degree, which means they didn't get their sodium balance right, which means this is something that needs to be looked at. And it's really simply done too. If you like that video, you should subscribe to our channel. There's more where that came from. And even like the video down below with a thumbs up or leave us a comment. If you want to see race analysis videos, click right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, click over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, head over to trainerroad.com. It works. Trust us. Just trust us. <laughs> we guarantee it. Oh yeah. Or your money back. It's true. Take us up on it.